Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. You always make sure that this book is in front of you when you're working with me. Today we'll solve some problem that you will find on page number 84. Page 84 and today is our day number 10. Let's begin. On page 84 the very first problem that you will find is number 65. Number 65 is asking us number 65 is asking us which which, which is greatest. That's all. They're given us five quantity. Our job is to locate the greatest ones. And here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, and 6. A, B, C, D, E. Wait now. We're not quite done yet. Even the GRE people are not going to be so going to be so damn silly. Sometimes they do ask you very babyish question, but they're not asking you which one of which, which one of these is greatest. As I said, wait. Three, four, five, six, seven. This is what they are asking. Which of these five quantities is greatest? 10 times root 3, 9 times root 4, 8 times root 5, and so on and so forth. Pause the video as I always insist. Pause the video. Do the problem yourself first and then compare your work against the work that we will do together. Okay? The easiest the quickest, the simplest way to tackle this problem, for example, let me give you a simple example. For example, if somebody asks you which quantity is bigger, 3.1, 3.7, or 3.5, if they ask you which quantity is bigger, the answer is not going to change even if you were looking at squares of the three quantities. Even if you square each other quantity, this quantity is still going to be greatest. That's the idea here. Looking at the quantities as they are given, we'll have to figure out the root of each value. We don't want to do that. That's going to take too much time. So what we do is, what we do is, we cheat. We square each everything. We square everything, and so on and so forth. Just keep squaring everything, and now it becomes very simple. Ten squared is one hundred. One hundred times three is one hundred times three is three hundred. Nine squared is eighty-one. So we get eighty-one times four. 64, 8 squared is 64, 64 times 5. 49, 7 squared is 49, 49 times 6. And then finally, 36 times 7. 36 times 7. And now we just have to figure out which one of these greatest. So here we go. That's 80 times 4 is 320. And then 1 times 4 is 4. So that's 324. That's already bigger than 300. So that's not it. 60 times 5 is 300. 60 times 5 is 300, and 4 times 5 is 20, that's 320. That does rise up to 320 as opposed to 300, but still is 320 is smaller than 324. So this guy is still the winner. 49 times 6, well we know 50 times 6 we can figure out very quick, very quickly. 49 times 6 would have to be, 49 times 6 would have to be 50 times 6 minus a 6, because we don't need 50 sixes, we need 49 sixes. And 56 is very easy to figure out, it's 300 minus 6. What 300 minus 6 is, it really doesn't matter. We're not going to waste our time to figure out what 300 minus 6 is. The fact is, whatever it is, is less than 324 that we already found. And similarly, this guy, 30 times 7 is 210, and 6 times 7 is 42. It doesn't even rise to 300. The answer is B. The answer is B because B was 324. Number 66. In number 66 we are told that B leaves at 8 a.m. heading east at 20 miles per hour. That is the speed is going 20 miles per hour and is going east. I was going to spell out the east but I don't have room. 
We are told also that A leaves at 11 a.m. heading west and A we are told is going at 40 miles per hour. You got it? We have their respective speeds. One guy is going 20 miles an hour to east, otherwise other guy is going to us at 40 miles an hour going west, but they left at different times. We are told now we are told that now they are 240 miles apart. The question simply is That's so. That's a very straightforward, simple question. What's the time now? What's the time now, given the fact that they are 240 miles apart now, keeping in fact the other three uh, factors here, that B left at 8 o'clock in the morning, going east at 20 miles an hour, A left three hours later at 11 o'clock, going west at 40 miles an hour, and they are 240 miles exactly apart right now. What's the time right now? Go ahead, do it yourself, pause the video. Let's see what we can do. Well, this guy left at 8 o'clock. So he had a head start. He had a head start of 3 hours. So up to so up to up to 11 a.m. B has already gone 60 miles. Because he has already traveled 3 3 hours. He has already traveled 3 hours and he's going 20 miles an hour. So he has already traveled 60 miles. After, after 11 a.m., they are falling apart at the rate of 60 miles per hour. And when I said they're falling apart, I don't mean they're falling to pieces. What I mean is they're separating, they're falling apart, apart, separated. They are falling apart at the rate of 60 miles per hour. Why 60 miles per hour? Because one guy is going 20 miles an hour in going towards east, the other guy is going the exact opposite direction, 40 miles an hour. So every hour they are falling apart 60 miles. So there you go, we are done. That's our, now we have our equation. So let's pretend that the question now is, what's the time now? Let's pretend that uh, they have been traveling for X hours from 11 o'clock. Okay, because up to up to eleven we already have it here. Up to eleven, this guy has traveled sixty miles. And if they travel further x hours, and each hour they are falling, uh, what this? I I cause of uh, for for a second I got scared because I I have two two sixties here. This is sixty and this is sixty, but they are both correct. So up to eleven o'clock, the first guy had already traveled sixty miles, and after eleven they are falling apart at sixty miles per hour. And we're going to pretend that they have been going for X hours. Each hour they are separating at 60 miles. And if they have traveled X hours, then in X hours they will be 60 times X miles apart. And this is the initial time because of they started separately. And this distance that you see there has to equal what they are telling us. 240 miles. The rest is quite straightforward. Subtract 60 from both sides. That's going to give us 180. There you go. Divide both sides by uh, 60 and we get 3. There you go. X equals 3. Take your time. Don't be hasty. X equals 3. Even though it's not necessary. Even though it is not necessary, but I insist. So here we go. Just take your time as I said. So this is 11 o'clock. That's when the story began. The story did not start at 8 because we're starting. This 3 represents the time starting from 11 o'clock, because we already took care of the first three hours. So 11 to 12 to 1 to 2, there you go. That's our 3. The answer is, it must be 2 o'clock right now. It must be 2 p.m. The answer is B. Time right now is 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Number 67. Number 67, we are told that we have a farmer here, and this farmer we are told 
clears 90% of his land for planting. He has cleared 90% of his land for planting. We are further told that of the cleared land, of the cleared land, that's the important part, 40% is planted with soybean, 50% is planted with wheat. We really don't, we really don't care uh, what they are planted with, but there is nonetheless. We are further told that the remaining remaining 720 acres are planted with corn. He has planted the remaining 70 acres, 70, 720 acres with corn. The question simply is how much land does he own? How much land does he own? How much total land does he own? Do it yourself, pause the video. Alright, here we go then. Let's start from the top so we have the room. So the fact that he has used 40% of his land for soybean and 50% for the wheat, which means that the 720 acres that they're talking about, which was used to plant corn, that 720 acres must represent, 720 acres must represent 10% of the cleared land. That's the important part to understand here. If that's the case, then 100% of the cleared land, I left no room for myself, I can squeeze it in here, you don't have to be so fussy, let's squeeze it in here. So 100% of cleared land must represent 7,200 acres. This is the cleared land, 7,200 acres. And we, also, we were also told that he only cleared 90% of his land, which means this 7,200 must equal, which means this 7,200 must equal 90% of his total land. Of course, that's what we were told, that he cleared only 90% of his land for planting. There we go. We have the equation, we can solve it. So 7,200 is equal to 90% of his total land. Let's call this L for his total land. Now we just have to solve for L. L is equal to 7,200 times 100, 72 times 100 times 100, over 90, over 90. Let's go away. Let's divide top and bottom by 3, so that becomes a 3. 7 is made up of 2 3s, 2 3s are 6. After we take away 6 from the 7, we have a 1. 1 goes and joins the 2 and becomes 12, and 12 is made up of 4. Oh, we can go one more. 8. Of course we can go over. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Of course we could, instead of doing the two baby steps, three, dividing this by three and then dividing again by three, I instead of doing the baby step, I don't know why I didn't see it, that we could have divided by nine. Of course, eight nines are seventy-two. Eight, eight nines are seventy-two, or if you like, nine eights are seventy-two. How do I know that nine eights are seventy-two? Because instead of nine eight, if I had ten eights, ten eight would have been eighty. Which is eight more than seventy-two. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. So it's eighty, it is eight, right here there's eight, this 8 right here, I'm going to write right here, this 8 right here, and then we have three zeros, 1, 2, and 3. He has 8,000 acres of land. Of course it makes sense because 90% of 8,000 would be 7,200 because 10% of 8,000 is 800. You subtract 800 from 8,000, you get 7,200, which is what we were told, that his cleared land is 7,200. It is no fun, it's never fun, when somebody starts explaining too much because it becomes too damn boring. I don't know why I did it. 68. In 68 we are told that the population doubles every month. So somebody is running an experiment in the lab 
with some kind of uh, animals or bacteria or whatever it is, it really doesn't matter to us. We are not interested in that part. 68. Now that is not what I have for 68 in the book. Oh yes. Yes, three animals and the population is doubling every three months. We are told that in the beginning, as the experiment starts, N0 is 3. Of course, they don't call it N0, that's what, I, that's what we are calling N0, N-A-U-G-H-T. That's the symbol right here. And don't, don't call it N0. N0 simply means the starting value. We are starting the experiment with three animals. The question is, what is going to be the population at the end of 10 months? If the population doubles every two, uh, if the population doubles every month, what's going to be the population? How many animals are we going to have at the end of ten months? Do it yourself. So what we need to understand here is that if we start at n naught, this is our beginning value, then the population at the end of first month. And two, the population value at the population at the end of second month, third month, fourth month, and so on and so forth. We could put a three here, but if you start with three here right now, it's too early for that. But if you start with three here right now, it's just going to make it make it more complicated. It's just going to create more work. Don't worry about it. We'll we'll deal with the fact we we'll deal with the fact that we have three to begin with, not one. We'll deal with that later. Let's right now for pretend that we're starting with one. If we only have just one animal. That one animal at the end of the first month is going to become two animals because they are doubling. The population doubles every three months. Two is going to become four, and four is going to become eight, and eight is going to become sixteen, and so on and so forth. The question is, how do we represent that? How do we represent this concept that it is doubling every every month? This is how we do it. This two is very easy to see here. That's the that's the population at the end of first month. The first month is two raised to one. Second month. The second month is 2 raised to 2 because 2 raised to 2 is going to give us 4. The, the population at the end of, end of third year is going to be 2 raised to 3. And at the end of fourth month is going to be 2 raised to 4. And we're starting out with 2 raised to 0. Because as we know, any number raised to 0 is 1. Any number raised to 0 is 1. That's our, that's our n naught. 2 raised to 1, 2 raised to so on and so forth. Therefore, the population at the end of tenth month population at the end of 10th month is going to be simply 2 raised to 10. Now the problem is, we did not start out with one animal, we started out with three animals. So big deal. If we start out with three animals, then 3 will become 6, and 6 will become 12, and 12 will become 24, and so on and so forth. So the correct answer is 3 times 2 raised to 10. That's our answer. The population at the end of 10 months is going to be 3 times three times 2 raised to 10. That was number 68. Let's do number 69. In number 69, this is what we have. One third plus one quarter plus one fourth, oh sorry, one fifth plus one sixth. This quantity has to equal, we are told, R times one ninth, one twelfth, one fifteenth, and one eighteenth. That's the case. One more time I'm going to read it. We are told that one third plus one quarter plus one fifth plus one sixth equals R times one ninth plus one twelfth plus one fifteenth plus one eighteenth. The question simply is, what is R? How much is R? Go ahead, do it yourself. So here's how we're going to tackle it. You see right here? A 9 and a 12 and a 15 and an 18, they're all multiple of 3 for a reason. They're all multiple of 3. Let's take out the 3 common. Uh, so I'm going to bring this thing a little bit on this side so we have more room here. So we have R here and let's take one third common. Let's take out a third common. If we take out one third common, 
then this one nine becomes one third, because one third times one third is going to give us one ninth. Similarly, the one twelve is going to become one one fourth, and one fifteenth is going to become one fifth. You get the idea. There we go. And here, of course, we have this side: one third plus one fourth plus one fifth plus one sixth. That doesn't that doesn't alter that fact. We still have this side. So there we go, we have this quantity here, exact same quantity there, it drops out. And what we're left with is that r is equal to, oh sorry, 1 is equal to r times 1 third. 1 is equal to r times 1 third, therefore r must be 3. That was number 69, the penultimate question on that page. Now we do the last one. The penultimate question on the page, penultimate. Let's do it on the bottom here so I can do the work. P E N. The word is penultimate. It's not to be pronounced, it is not pen ultimate. It's penultimate, second to the last. Penultimate means second to the last. When we finish number 69, that was the penultimate question on the page. Let's do the ultimate, the last one. Number 70. I don't know how I got into this thing. Number 70 is a little tricky one. We are told that x and y are positive integers. So they are, posi they are positive and they are whole numbers. We are further told that y is a multiple of 5. In other words, y is a in other words, uh, since they have to be positive, in other words, y is either 5 or 10 or 15 or 20, you get the idea. We are further told that we have to satisfy this condition. And 3x plus 4y, we are told, must equal 200. And the question is, if, that, if all of that is true, then x must, must be multiple that's not how you spell multiple. Of what? And here are the answer choices. I'm going to put the answer choices right here. 3, 6, 7, 8, and 10. These are the answer choices. I'm going to read the question one more time and I'm going to get out of your way. We are told that. We have two numbers, two quantities, which are integers. They are both positive and they are both whole numbers. We are further told that y happens to be a multiple of 5. And these integers are such that 3 times x plus 4 times y equals exactly 200. If all of that is true, then x must be multiple of what? Is x a multiple of 3 or a 6 or a 7 or a 8 or a 10? Do it yourself. Pause the video and do it yourself. Let's begin, shall we? Since we are told, since y, we are told, is a multiple of 5, let, let y equal 5 times k. In other words, k is either 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, or something like that, because we know y has to be 5, 10, 15, 20, or something like that. So y can be written as 5 times some other integers, 5 times k. Let's substitute this quantity here, y equals to 5 times k, in this equation right here. So we get 3x plus 4y, 4y, but 4y is simply 4 times 5k, and that has to equal 200. I'm going to pick this up. We're going to pick this up on the top. We have to be careful not to erase the answers. So now, we're picking this up on the top. So that implies that 3x 
3x must equal 200 minus this quantity 5 times 4k which is 20k which in turn implies that 3x must equal 20 times 10 minus k which in turn implies that x must equal 20 times 10 minus k I must erase this thing because it's getting too annoying now which implies that x must equal 20 times 10 minus k over 3 okay here we go we are almost done since x is an integer since we are told that x is an integer which means both of this quantity this quantity right here has to be an integer which of course is a silly thing to say because obviously we can bloody well see that it is an integer and this quantity must also be an integer because an integer times an integer is going to give us a whole number do you understand? because they both have to be a whole number we are not interested in the second part we are not interested in the second part what we are interested in is, is this part this part tells us that x whatever it is x whatever it is this implies that x must be must be a multiple of 20 because it says right there because x is equal to 20 times some other thing so it must be a multiple of 20 and 20 of course can be can be factored as 20 is made up of it, it must be a factor of 2 or 4 or, or 5 or 10 or 20 well is 2 here? no x is not a multiple of 2 because well x could be multiple x would have to be a multiple of 2 if it's, if it's a multiple of 20 let me start again if x is a multiple of 20 x must also be a multiple of 2 but 2 is not here x is a multiple of 4 but 4 is not here x is a multiple of 5 also if it's a multiple of 20 it must be a multiple of 5 but 5 is not here only thing that we have here is 10 the answer is E the answer is E and that was the ultimate question on the page the very last question that brings us to the end of the show Amen I'll see you tomorrow okay bye now